about Allen Wood. What do you remember about Allen Wood and going to the police department and stuff? Uh -huh. At the police department, being a police officer and okay. assistant chief. Okay, I went on the police department in Allen Wood as a patrolman, as a night patrolman. <clears throat> in 1954, we had 12 hour shifts. Who else was on the police department then? Uh, we had 12 hour shifts. Rip Boston was the chief of police. Uh, uh, Les Lloyd was assistant chief of police. I was a patrolman. <coughs> and then they had an old man. I can't think of his name now, but anyway, an old man. And he uh, uh, took a day off. When we were off, he was on. And uh, uh, last, last Lloyd come out to the farm and interviewed me out there. And uh, uh, and the, the uh, uh, Mayor and the city council and the uh, uh, Jim Fuller, who was the city manager, all sat in on my hearing, on my on my uh, uh, whether I'd be. Uh, Selected or not. <coughs> so I, uh, they all asked me some questions around there. They all found that I was a pro officer. A pro officer? I mean, I was a, uh, a, uh, Tri paratrooper? Paratrooper. And boy, that, had, that, uh, got their attention. Uh, I didn't know anything about law enforcement. I was totally, completely dumb right there on that farm. I was really dumb, you know. And uh, so anyway, hi baby. So anyway, why uh, they all asked me questions and everything. So. I said, well, my policy, <coughs> my, my policy is that I'm going to be very strict and follow the law, strictly to follow the law. I'm going to be strictly, totally impartial. And I pointed at the mayor, which is Zahn. <coughs> <coughs> I said, I'll arrest you as quick as I will on everybody south of the track. Was Zahn the, uh, was he the guy Lee's that... Zahn, Leroy Zahn. Was he the guy that owned the Western Auto, or what did he do? Uh -huh. What it, He was, uh, I kind of remembered Zahn. Leroy Zahn, he was mayor okay. at that time. I can't remember what, did he uh, run the Western Auto store, or was he an insurance agent? I forget. Leroy Zahn was a, uh, uh, the one that run the, uh, the grocery store was, uh, That was Labergio, wasn't it? Labergio. Okay. And, uh, Leroy Zahn, I think, was insurance. He was an insurance here. He comes from Burdette, Kansas. Hmm. Leroy Zahn migrated from Burdette, Burdette, Kansas. So Hallowood was dominated by either the Catholics or the Lutherans. 
and one would have control of the city and everything uh, for a while, and the other one would. And there was probably competition on him hmm. there. <clears throat> it had the reputation, a reputation of being the wildest city in the state of Kansas. Oil was just first discovered there. <clears throat> Uh, northeast of Ellawood, and still there, big, never have run out there. And they was uh, extremely rich people in Ellawood that uh, had oil, had moved off of farms and had, uh, were millionaires with them. Well, Ellawood probably had the biggest uh, Population of millionaires of any small city in size in the state. Hmm. Both of them were uh, <coughs> German, uh, <coughs> Allenwood had 12 liquor stores. 12 liquor stores. It had uh, two big uh, nightclubs inside the city and two outside the city. And the uh, people come, they were rich, they catered to the rich and everything. People come from Kansas City and all over there. So. You had the oil, rich oil population in the People's State Bank, and the People's State Bank was uh, <coughs> the richest bank in the state of Kansas. Had the reputation of being the richest, uh, richest state uh, bank in the state of Kansas. Not did any of Great Bend's banks or any, any uh, uh, other by Wichita banks or anything, <clears throat> and Eastern, Eastern, the Eastern brothers owned the uh, the bank, the People's State Bank in Alabama. <clears throat> it had a uh, Lutheran church, a big Catholic church, where Grandpa Keeley had built. Your Grandpa Keeley. Huh? Your Grandpa Keeley. My Grandpa Keeley built. What, around 1900, something like that? Huh? What, when? Do you remember about when? Was it around early 1900s? The early 1900s, and Dad was a little boy, went over there with him, and uh, he bought Dad a 20, uh, uh, a 410, which you got from Allenwood when he was building that. Yeah. That's one of the oldest little guns here. Single shot little 410 shotgun. But he bought grapple that 410, put it way there. He quarried all those stone in, in the wintertime, numbered them, started out with a corner stone, and numbered them, numbered each one, and he had them all numbered and all planned out, then in the summer he would buy a, he would hire a great big crew of people and they would cement those stones in and set them in and set them in. And I think that's probably just as strong today as uh, and he built 17 of those in the state of Kansas. Hmm. Where are some of the others? Huh? Where are some of the others? Uh, what's that little town? Uh, South of uh, Allenwood. Uh, oh, uh, South of Allenwood. Oh, had a pretty wild reputation and everything. Uh, uh, what, Stafford, Hudson? Huh? Uh, then the, the one, out, uh, one out north, he built that one. He built the... Uh, St. Peter and Paul up at, at uh, uh, and where 
back if a back boy is uh, Oh, lacrosse or huh? lacrosse or Hayes? Lacrosse. Yeah. Uh, I never did get a list of them, so I don't know just where they was at. But they was all built the same way. You go out there in the winter time and uh, put cracks in the dig down cracks in the stone, long mm -hmm. stone there, then pour water in it. And then he would, uh, that would freeze and crack them, get the, the right size he wanted long, he had to cut them this way then, you know. That was limestone? Huh? He used lime? limestone? Yeah. All limestone? Yeah. yeah. Where did he learn that? Do you huh? know? Did he learn that in Ireland or where, do you know? Oh, he learned that in Philadelphia. He went to, when he come back from United, when he come back on the ship there, when he jumped ship and come in there in New York. Why don't you tell the story of what, why he came to America? Huh? Tell why he came to America from he Ireland. He came to America because uh, his folks were rich drovers. Grovers meant that they raised sheep and, and cattle and livestock. And they had big alfalfa and hay and everything. And they would uh, buy that stuff when it was small, then feed it out, raise it till it was big, and then sell it. And they would, from Kilkenny County, Ireland. They come from Kilkenny County, Ireland. <coughs> and they was the richest, one of the richest people in Kilkenny, Ireland. The problem is when Phyllis and I went there, we found out that there was 17 uh, uh, parishes, Catholic parishes in Kilkenny. And uh, the church that they went to had burnt down. The records mm. were oak. Mm. That's too bad. Yeah. Terry found their, their grave. He went to cemetery and out there and he found the grandpa and grandma, uh, great grandpa and grandma Kigley's grave. In Kilkenny County? In Kilkenny County. That we never did find it. Uh, now that was Grandpa Keeley did that. Grandma Keeley come from uh, from uh, what's the big capital of uh, our what Dublin or Dublin? They come from Dublin County. They didn't live in Dublin, but they come from Dublin County, and her folks were aristocrats. Had were had a aristocratic name. Right? Yeah. And then uh, she migrated over uh, before Grandpa Keeley did. And what was your Grandpa Keeley's name? Huh? Was, was it John? John. John Henry? John, John Henry Keeley. That's where you got the John, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, what happened is they were supposed to go to church. Catholic Church, and him and some of his boyfriends, about his age and everything, they uh, how they old? went out to the barn and was smoking cigarettes, and they caught the damn barn on fire and burnt the barn up. About how old were they? Uh, about 15, I think, 15 or 16. <clears throat> and. Uh, he got on the ship, slipped on the ship, and got in, got into a lifeboat. And he took supplies there, and they got about halfway over, and they found him there. So they made him get out and work and board and everything. And they come into New York Harbor, and they let him off, and uh, uh, he's 
told them all and everything. And when he got off the ship and was going down the street there in New York, that the little news hawk boys had their papers out and they were yelling, Abraham Lincoln has been assassinated. Abraham Lincoln has been assassinated. So we know about when he came over. Then. When he came over. They didn't, didn't stay in New York very long. He had some kind of relatives or something, an aunt or something in Philadelphia. And he went to Philadelphia. And at that place there, he took up an apprentice, uh, apprentice uh, thing for a stonemason. Studied to be a stonemason and everything. And then I, then he met Grandma. What was her name, you remember? Uh -huh. What was her name? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, uh, Chillicothe, Missouri. And, uh, he met her in Missouri? Huh? He met her in Missouri or in Philadelphia? Phil no, we met her in Chicago somewhere or other. I don't know how. Huh. But she was related to uh, the gal was kicked over the the cow kicked over the bucket. Oh, Mrs. O'Leary? O'Leary. She was a related, a cousin or something to O'Leary. But anyway, he met her in Chicago. But anyway, they come from <coughs> Chillicothe out here to, because there's a German, I mean, Amer Irish settlement north of Potty Rock, four miles north of Potty Rock, uh, along the Long draw there, big draw and everything. And the Irish had settled it there and they called it Little Ireland. And they had, uh, they made, uh, they dug into the sides and made caves or, the, or they made, uh, or they made sod houses and everything. He made a sod house and he kept building onto this sod house. And he raised seven kids. He had seven kids. That he had seven kids, and that dad was the younger. Yeah, James. He was what? James Edward Keeley. Huh? Your dad, James Edward Keeley. Yeah. He was born in a sod house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. North of Pawnee Rock. Huh? North, North of Pawnee Rock. Rock. Yeah. Okay. In Little Ireland. Little Ireland. Okay. Little Ireland. They had one. A uh, community well, big well, community well, they dug a big deep well in there. there and they had a bucket to go down. They, Dad said that they had to go down and dip the water out and bring it up there and throw the little toads out of the, of the bucket. Out of the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Uh, now, was. Uh, did, was Grandma, uh, you've got a dresser here that came over in a uh, covered wagon. Tell, what's, what's the story on that? That was them. That was them, coming to Kansas. That's when they brought the, that's when they brought the uh, chest, chest in there, the chest they brought it in a covered wagon. Okay. In there, come in there. But didn't Grandma, uh, Die or pass away, right? No, they both died right close together. Did they close? Okay. Yeah. They died at the, See, they bought. Uh, they started buying land and everything. They bought Aunt Mary that house and everything up there at Larned. And. Uh, now, your Aunt Mary was uh, one of the sister. Your dad, your uh, grandpa's sisters. Huh. Your. He, with dad's sister, with dad's sister, older sister. Dad's sister. Oh, your grand, your dad, dad's. She was okay. Keely. See, there was Aunt Annie, and uh, <coughs> Aunt Annie, Aunt Bess, and Aunt Mary, and there was Uncle Tom and Uncle Fred, <coughs> and Dad. Okay. Was there another one? Uh huh. And uh, Aunt Bess and Uncle Charlie, uh, uh, they uh, they went to 
he come from Denver. They went to Denver, and they bought a place out in Denver. And when I was a little boy, I went out with Aunt Mary to their home there in Denver. And their the home was probably seven or eight miles west of Denver. There wasn't any houses set around it or anything. And Eldon, Robert and Eldon was the two boys there. And they were into uh, racing, uh, uh, midget car racing. They made midget cars and raced them. They all kinds of balloons. They floated balloons, air balloons up. Floated them over Denver. And uh, then they become pilots, you know. And uh, and uh, Elder become a uh, a he built houses and uh, realtor and built sold houses and this type thing. Come pretty well wealthy. Robert was at, he flew the hump during the war. A lot of combat. A lot of com hard combat. A lot of uh, he flowed at a hump and he, and he didn't have a fighter escort or anything like that. And uh, he's a hell of a good pilot. Uh, was he the one that became a pilot in Alaska then? Uh -huh. Was he the one that became a pilot in Alaska? Or was no, that, his boys. His boys did. Boys did. Okay. Not his boy. No, that was Ray Law. Oh, okay. That was... Uh, What about what, what about uh, who were the Uncle Tom? Uncle Tom married uh, who was it? Tom and uh, huh? Your your Uncle Tom? Yeah, he was the oldest. He was the oldest. What? Did, he, who did he marry? Huh? Who was your aunt? He had to. You know, he married. Uh, uh, Dutch gal, German gal, and everything. Wonderful cook and butcher and everything like that. Okay. He was wonderful. And where did he settle at? Well, they settled out. They settled four four miles uh, uh, west. Uh, uh, I mean, east of across the river. Or Kansas, yeah. You you've been to the place there, where right, yeah. You know, that's, yeah, I, that's a homestead. Okay. He had a big. Great big round barn, tin barn, beautiful home. Okay. That beautiful buildings, outbuildings were all tin in and everything kept up. And he had the two girls. Who who were they? Huh? What's their uh, name? Do you uh, remember? Uh, my two cousin girls. Uh, one of them. Married the Oklahoma guy, went to Oklahoma State and everything. Okay. And uh, he was a womanizer and a drinker. Hmm. And he had uh, he had the boys turned out pretty damn good, really good, you know. And uh, uh, and. Uh, what about Uncle Fred had the uh, four boys and the girl just like Dad, Mom did. Okay. And the same thing. He was Catholic. She was Methodist. Remember what her? I remember going over to their house and yeah. she was a good cook too. Radium. They had four miles uh, uh, south or eight. Okay. What were their kids' names? You remember? Oh, well, Jack was the oldest. Jack and he was the highway patrolman and everything. He was the oldest. Then Jim, he run the hardware store and run the store there. And radium. And radium and everything. He had the two girls. Okay. Everything. Uh, 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 Jim let Lloyd. Lloyd was the one that was pretty wild. He got mixed up with the Keenan brothers. They lived, Keenan lived right there. 
and the Kenans would come over and they got to drinking beer and everything. And he worked for Dad. And, uh, and, uh, uh, uh one, I remember one time that the Kenans come over and they had a case of beer or something like that. Mary went out there and brought them off. <laughs> And Lloyd got the right check, bad checks. And he had uh, two or three bad checks worn out for him. Coming. And Dad took him to the back, gave him the money to go in there and pay it. And he, he told Dad, he said, I can't go in there, I'm all dirty. He says, you're dirty, but he says, by God, it's not your clothes. That, that you're dirty from is you got to get cleaned up from. You got to get cleaned up for writing damn bad check. Keely, don't do that. Keely's do not write bad check ever, ever, ever. They don't break the law. You're a Keely. God damn it, you better live like a Keely. Get your ass in there and pay that off. Apologize to him. Well, he worked for Dad. Dad straightened him out pretty well. Got most of his damn drinking, got him pretty well sobered up and drinking everything. And the war come along, and he went in as a damn tank tankman in there with Patton's goddamn Sherman tanks, <coughs> and. Uh, that's when those damn little old Sherman tanks had 75 pack houses on them. And those 88s had, those, I mean, those the tire tanks had 88s and. and uh, the German, they, yeah, the Germans had much higher, uh, better the, tanks. The, our tanks would fire, maximum range was uh, six miles, and their maximum range was 12 miles. And boom, boom, boom. Boom! Before we ever got close to him, he got shot out of four tags. Lloyd did. Lloyd got shot out of four tags. The last time he got his knee shot off, and then he got they discharged him from the service after he did. Well, they kept him for a while, everybody. but uh, he, uh, he got discharged. Everybody. He went to Denver. And settled in Denver, married, and had two boys in Denver. And they both had heart trouble. They both died early, real early. I went to the, I went to his funeral, hmm. and uh, we drove out there to his funeral. And the boys were just not very big. Uncle Fred and Aunt Ruth took them in, took those two boys in, and brought them in, and God, they was, you know. They was they had already raised their families and they were old and everything, but they brought them in and they kept them as long as they was could do it, able to physically and everything. <clears throat> I've lost track of them. I don't know. Don't know what happened to them, huh? Don't know what happened to them. They had straightened out. They both got education. Uncle Fred says they got through high school. <clears throat> and took up a, a he, he saw what they got into a, some kind of a skill skill deal, you know, yeah. so they could make a living and everything. So they was set up. He had them set up pretty good to where they didn't have to go out and burglarize or steal or anything anymore. So, but I lost track of them. Kind of lost track of them. What about Keith? Keith was uh, wasn't Keith another son of uh, Keith was Fred the third and Ruth? Son. And Keith was a great guy, wonderful guy. Yeah, I remember Keith yeah, over in St. John. Nice looking guy and everything. Lived in St. John. Ann, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> the problem with Keith is he married a Methodist girl, and I married. I remember the. And Mary didn't like that, huh? Oh, she screamed and hollered and bawled. She was a big Catholic? Mm hmm Yeah. But they had water. I mean, they got along great and everything. Yeah. Everything. He did good. Not, you know, yeah. He did great. And, and, uh, 
and uh, uh, then Ruthie, little Ruthie, she was the youngest girl. It was like just like our family. And, uh, she grew up, and uh, she was a uh, couple years younger than I was. And everything, but I used to go. She used to come over to dance over at uh, Lorna at, uh, at the Blue Goose and everything. We danced, and Aunt Ruth, Aunt Ruthie was. She was a good little gal. She had a nice family. She married a guy, and they went out to Colorado. They lived out in Colorado. She raised her family out there. Yeah, she's I still. I lost track of. Them. Is she still alive? Do you know? No, no. I no. Know that. Okay. Oh, dead. So, okay. So we uh, talked about all, all that. My dad been dead quite a while. Talked about Ted, Tom, and, and uh, Fred, and who were the other brothers and sisters of your dad? My dad. Dad. And then uh, uh, Aunt Mary. Aunt Mary. She never married, did she? No, she never married. But she lived there in Larned, and you used to go to her house a lot. She took care of them the, until they died. He went blind. Your your grandpa. Your grandpa Keeley went blind. For, yeah. For completely blind. He took care of them. The man, my earliest memory of them was she took me in there and put me in bed with them. With what, Grandpa and Grandma? And uh, they talked to me and loved me and everything, and talked yeah. to me and everything. And I was just probably two or two and a half, something like that. I, you know. Well, what was the story when you were born? You were you were tiny and premature, and they thought you were going to die. Black. Huh? Uh, you were black. What had happened? It was cold. It was in November, November twenty-first, and that hospital hall was colder. He grabbed me. And I guess he grabbed me by my feet, and and all that mucus and uh, stuff started coming out of my lungs and I had a big a whole big stuff stuff of uh, and my circulation started and I started getting pink but I was just I think I was only I was I was awful 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 preparatory and uh, uh, they didn't know you know they had baby me for a long 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 time Mom had a, uh, she would uh, buy beef, beef steak, and then put it in, boil it, and I had me drinking pure uh, beef steak. Broth? Broth, you know, and everything, for years and everything. And I was, uh, but my heart and everything was good. It was all good. I mean, it all put together good. I didn't have any defects. I didn't have any uh, physical, mental, or anything DTP defect. I was just premature. You're just premature baby. Yeah. Just you know. Okay, but to to recap, what we didn't have on the the video was that okay when you were born, the doctor first thought you were dead. Uh -huh. The doctor first thought you were dead. They were dead. They put me in the hallway. They put you in the hallway because you were turning black. Because uh, I was totally black. Totally black. And he was working on... Uh, mom. Your mom. And then it was uh, Grandma Pearl uh, that saw you there in the hallway. She come in to see Mom. And she come in there and she saw the baby there. And she looked the baby over. She took the covers off me. Had me wrapped up in my face and the cover and everything was covered. I thought I was dead. She took that door off there, and she saw my chest was going up and down. That's when she, she ran right in. Right in there and told the doctor that I was alive yet. And everything. Mm -hmm. He come and got me, and he they they said they got me by the feet, and he did. And stuff started coming out of my lungs on the floor, mm -hmm. mucus and stuff. And, uh, you know, and as soon as that oxygen got to me and uh, 
why well, I, I started breathing the oxygen got to me I started turning pink again and started breathing regular they got me believe breathing regular again and they got me breathing and everything so you were always kind of short then too weren't you kind of uh -huh. you were uh, always kind of uh, small yeah. For your for your age, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we talked about Aunt Mary being there in Larned, and your memory, first memory of her, and uh, you stayed with her quite a bit, didn't you, when you're going to school in Larned? Huh? You stayed with Aunt Mary quite a bit. I always stayed with Aunt Mary. Went to Larned. We first started at Pawnee Rock. Pawnee Rock's there. We went to Pawnee Rock. Uh, now your house was what? One mile south of Pawnee Rock. Until we got to uh, seventh grade. Then we went to Lauren for seventh and eighth grade freshman. Okay. And we stayed up there with uh, Aunt Mary. Aunt Mary would take me to Catholic Church and everything. Go in there and I couldn't understand. It was all Latin. See, at that time, everything was Latin. And I could, you know, but nobody could, I, unless you was. Yeah. You know. Well, now your dad was uh, Catholic. Your mom was Methodist. Right. And, and, and you, she took us to the Methodist, Methodist Church. Church. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what was the deal? Your, uh, your dad. Uh, was disgusted at the priest or something that the priest was a roundabout. He would chase women, having women, and uh, he was an alcoholic and everything. And Dad said he wasn't going to go to church to a hypocrite or that. And I guess the next closest church was St. John or Uncle Fred went to. Uh, he didn't want to drive clear over to St. John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did uh, since Saint, uh, he didn't have any Catholic church in Potter Rock or anything? Since Aunt Mary was all upset about uh, Fred marrying a, a, a Keith, Meth Keith or Keith, what about uh, your dad and mom? Was he upset or was Aunt Mary upset about your your mom? She didn't like it. She didn't, didn't like that. Didn't like it at all. But they got along. She worked out there on that farm. She, she worked, you know, everybody worked on that farm. It was a Keeley, you know, Grandpa Keeley had bought land for everybody. You know, he bought land for, uh, he bought Uncle Tom's place, he took Uncle Fred's place, he bought the land along the river there. Uh, you know, that place I've got now, he bought that for uh, Aunt uh, uh, Uncle Charlie and Aunt Annie. Uncle Charlie was the mayor of Pawnee Rock. He was also the also the sheriff, stricter than hell, I guess. And he built he was a, he built the pavilion up on top of Pawnee Rock. He took most of stone off, quarried that stone off there, a lot of those buildings and everything in Pawnee Rock were built from the top of that. that actually, I think it was twice as high, but that pavilion's still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was in Annie, so we got, we got Tom, Fred, uh, Dad Keeley, and then uh, Aunt Mary and Aunt Annie. And there was was there any others or was that any others aunts and uncles that you hit? Uh -huh. You have any other aunts and uncles then? Okay. Well, tell about um, uh, Grandpa Jack. Now that he was uh, your mom's dad, right? No. He was Irish. Uh, Jack. Was, we went from Ireland to. Uh, to uh, oh, uh, Scotland. 
He was Irish Scotch. Okay. Now, his name was Jack McConaughey. Huh? His last name was McConaughey, right? Last name was McConaughey. He had two brothers. They had a big... I'm not sure how they got this, but, but anyway... Yeah. So somehow he got to Larned from Kentucky then. And of course, he was always an old man when I knew him and everything, but he was, he was a, he was the, uh, he was a, the sheriff there, Pawnee County Sheriff there, or, uh, and uh, I mean Barton, uh, Pawn Pawnee County Sheriff Lorna there. And uh, he was big and pop. Big picture of where he went and, and picked up a murder, traced a murder down. Somebody had killed some prominent guy there, stole his money and everything, and took off. And, and uh, the grapple traced him, went and got him, arrested him, brought him back for trial. And they had this and this, uh, they had these and these, uh, did true detectives and everything, hmm. and everything. Then he went on as a post officer. In the meantime, he was working as a, uh, got the co-op going. He bought a whole section of, of Main Street there. Uh, had a hotel, barber shop in it. Uh, uh, He's big, he's big in politics, wasn't he? Huh? Wasn't he big in politics? Oh, he's a big Democrat? Big Democrat, biggest Democrat, you know. And uh, he bought that farm out uh, uh, west, uh, northwest, Lauren, four miles northwest, right across, just four miles uh, from the cemetery, right straight there. And uh, bought the house, bought a they bought that big block there, and they bought a nice home, beautiful home there in Lorna. He lived there, Lorna there. Uh, Uncle Jack and Aunt Faye raised their family out there on the farm. John and Bonnie and, and uh, all them were born out there on that farm, raised on that farm. Yeah, Uncle Jack, was was he... Uh, brother. My, uh, brother or son? Uh, mother's brother. Okay, but son of, of, of Grandpa Jack. Huh? Uncle Jack was one of the, was a son. Uh, a son of his, yeah. And then your your mom, Lita? It was the second family. They were two families, you know. First, there was uh, Uncle Jack, then Mom, then Aunt Toad. Aunt Toad. And then when they had a boy, John, he died, Dick Thurry. Okay. They had to have a. They had to have that house fumigated and everything. But he was only, I think, on fifteen or 14, fifteen or sixteen years old when he died. Okay. And then what? What happened on the second family? Second family uh, was uh, Lucille. Well, what? Who died? The uh, Grandpa Jack's first wife passed uh, away. When when Mom was eleven. When she was 11, okay. When she was 11. And then Grandpa Jack remarried. I can get her buried Grandma Pearl. Okay. Grandma and Pearl come from Oklahoma. Blackwell? Blackwell, Oklahoma. Okay. And then who was in the second family? Who were the the people born? Now, Lucille was the oldest. Then Aunt Annie, I mean, uh, Anne. And Bill, and then they were they had a, uh, he had another one die dead. Yeah. Now Bill was was he just a little bit older than you, Bill McConaughey? Yeah, about three or four years older. Cousin, but you were pretty close. Yeah. Now he was served in World War Two, and uh, what did he do in World War Two? Bill he flew a he flew a C uh, 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 fighter. Was it bomb? a bomber? bomber? He was a bombardier. And, uh, over Germany. Wasn't it? Over Germany. And I don't know how many sorties they made and everything. 
But on D-Day, they bombed Berlin and he was shot down. They were shot down in Berlin. And uh, when the plane, uh, he was, he, they all jumped parachuted out. And uh, the, uh, they all got out and landed live. But the civilians come in there with pitchforks and clubs and everything, killed them all. Bill, when he landed, he saw what was going on. He was one of the last ones down there. He got out of his chute and he ran over there and there was a swamp, water in it and everything. So he dived into that swamp and pulled himself down under the water and held himself down with the reeds there. He cut a reed off, put it in his mouth and stuck it up. And he says they hunted for quite a while. And he says he's almost sure that a German come up there and looked and saw him and, and turned away. A German soldier did. He says he's almost sure that a German soldier saw him, but he not positive. You know. But anyway, they give up. So that night, he got up he started trying to walk to Switzerland. <clears throat> so he would walk during the night, then he would steal from gardens and stuff, uh, orchards and gardens and stuff, and, and, uh, and uh, hide during the daytime, hide someplace and, and stay all day ahead then to get out at night walk again. He did that for five days. And he got so wore out and tired and he didn't know what direction he was going in or where he was going for sure. You know, he didn't have it. Uh, but anyway, he said he got so damn tired and everything. It was this nice, pretty stream down there, a clear, clear stream. So he went down there and, and took his clothes off and bathed in there, washed his clothes all out. When he was doing that, a German come by with a cart with a, with a donkey or something on the cart and everything. I saw him down there. And uh, the German took picking him up, took him in took him home, gave him broth, fed him, fed him and everything, and then called the authorities. And uh, they picked him up then and took him into uh, all that notorious uh, POW camp, real notorious. And they helped, he tried to help out. Uh, they tried to dig tunnels out and stuff like that, you know. They had a continuous deal with the Germans, you know. You know they gave them their name, uh, serial number, rank name and serial number, and that's all they give them, you know, and this type of thing, and the Germans. And, uh, they was uh, cruel to them. He says they didn't feed them hardly anything. They, they was, uh, they, were, they killed all the damn cats and ate the cats and, and uh, anything, like birds or anything like that, you know. But he says, you know, they had those air raids and they had blackouts and everything. He says, you didn't dare open a window or anything. He said, one guy looked through the window and they shot him right through the, mm. right through the head, mm. there, you know, in his barracks and everything. Well, he was a he was a non-com on that plane. Brandon or Brandon George Brandon was a pilot of a plane. He was captured. Now was he from Lorna? Lorna, both of still... them schoolmates and everything. Uh huh. And uh, uh, he was in the same prison camp, but they separated their officers from the list of men. But they got together two or three or four times, got to visit and everything, everything. 
but anyway, The damn department, the war department got screwed up. <clears throat> like they always did something or anything. And they sent a telegram to mom and dad said that I was missing in action. That you were? I was, instead of Bill. Instead of Bill? That probably got grandma all. all oh, upset. hell yeah. 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 And of course, mom, you know. So she got a hold of Captain Buck out. That was your captain? No, oh, I captain. He says, no, he's alive. But he says, I can't tell you where, how, why. He says, but he is alive. He's not captured or he's not missing. He is alive. Here he was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but he says, we're already combating. <coughs> but anyway, they got it straight now. Okay. And uh, uh, that he was missing, and then they come up that he was a prisoner of war. Uh, he he had to stay. In, in, uh, he he was a prisoner of war for the rest of the war, wasn't he? Till the end of the war. And how did he get down to Louisiana? Well, uh, when uh, when. Uh, when he got, when they, when they, uh, the, it was the 13th Airborne that opened up his prison. And the guards were still there and, and everything. And Bill says there's a damn major there. At, and it bothered Bill always lie. A damn major there. Wanted to make a name for himself. He ordered Bill, now Bill never had any infantry experience or anything, he was a you know, it, yeah. bomber pilot. Ordered him to charge that that uh, guard tower and try to take the tower. Hell, they had a, a German machine gun up there and rifles and everything else. And he refused. He says, I'm not, you know, I, I've lived through this and everything. He says, it, it'd just be suicide for me to, without a weapon or anything, charging that, everything. He refused to do it. And, uh, and uh, the major said, well, I'm going to have you court martial. And he said, I'd rather be court martial and have the other, and people understand what the hell I was, I was up against. And, uh, and follow your orders. He says, I, I've always followed orders all my life, but he says, I'm not going to follow your order. He says, I don't think it's a, he says, I don't think it's a military competent order. And of course it wasn't. But anyway, it bothered him. I, you know, I told Bill, I says, I sure as hell wouldn't have let it bother me. You know. But anyway, they uh, they uh, released him, got him fed, and got him home, and everything. And Grandma Pearl was with uh, Lee and Ann uh, in uh, in uh, California. Now Lee and Ann, that would have been. Uh the daughter and his sister. Okay, and his sister. Yeah, his sister. And I believe it was her husband. Uh, they had a couple kids and everything. So he went there and he hunted around there for work and everything. And he found some piddly stuff and everything. But then uh, Lucille. Uh, and her husband had went down to Louisiana and he was a head of a big plant and head of a, uh, he was a big shot down there, a great big shot and everything. They had beautiful home, great big beautiful home. So uh, Lucille had him come down there 
and they got him a job in this factory as an engineer in his factory. He had him go to school and everything as an engineer. He got a hell of a good job, big paying job. Well, he lived with them. He lived with them then for quite a while. You went down there when they were living there. You remember? We were, yeah. They had the little, they had the black gal. Yeah. Which you told mom that she would try to make you eat. Uh, eat hay, yeah. Hay or something. Alfalfa, yeah. Alpha, yeah. So it was why. the it was the wheat uh, the rolled wheats or whatever it is. But anyway, Carol was a was a uh, was a secretary in there, you know. And she she was a real, real Cajun. She was absolutely Cajun all the way. And she had you know she had uh, what I call it when she was young and. Polio. Polio, and she had a bad this leg and everything, and her all that. But anyway, she and Bill met, and uh, Bill was pretty old by that time. They were everything. They got married, and of course they, then they had uh, Pat and Ann, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And uh, but he had a hell of a good job and everything. Did good and everything. Done. Yeah. It was great. Going back bought to this, bought their home down there then, and right. So yeah. for yeah, we've been down there a couple times. A lot, three or four times. Yeah. Yeah, it was always fun to go down to Louisiana. But going back to Grandpa Jack, I, I remember you telling stories of he loved Fourth of July, didn't he? Huh? Your Grandpa Jack McConaughey, didn't he love Fourth of July? Oh, he loved it. Memorial Days was a special big. Huge day, holiday, Memorial Day. Every grave would clear all back as far as like you know. Before I, I even knew him, and his brothers and and everything. 